Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to unraid a Promise Pegasus R4i internal hard drive. Uh, mine's running on a 2019 Mac Pro desktop. And the way that the Pegasus works is it comes with four internal drives, which are eight terabytes each. Now mine came configured in the RAID 0 configuration, which basically means that all these drives are going to be combined together as one 32 terabyte internal drive. Now the problem with that is, is when one of those drives craps out, you're basically SOL because you're going to lose all your data on all the drives. So what I wanted to do was break them apart and use each of the drives individually. That way if something happens to one of the drives, then at least the other three are still going to be intact. But I also want to mention that in the process of learning about this, I came across another RAID configuration, which is actually going to work better for me. It's called the RAID 5, and I'm going to explain that to you at the end of this video. So stick around and let's unraid this Promise Pegasus. So before you start this process, you're going to want to download the Promise Utility app, uh, which is in the link below. Go ahead and open that. And then once it opens up, you want to double click on the little padlock in the bottom left. Give your administrative password. Then you want to go up to the top and click on Disk Array, and it will pull up your current configuration. So now you can see your current array, 32 terabytes. Now, before you do this next thing, you want to make sure that you have backed up everything that you want to keep off of this Pegasus because this is going to wipe out the entire drive, okay? So make sure you're backed up. Come over here to the three dots, and then you want to hit Delete. Now it's going to ask you to type in, you actually have to type in the word Confirm. Confirm, and now it's wiping out the drive. Okay, and then you can see the disk array was deleted successfully. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go up here to the physical drive tab, and this is where you're going to configure each of these individual drives. Okay, so you go to the first one, go to settings, and on this one what you're doing, you're basically creating what is called a pass-through drive on each of these, meaning that each four you're going to be able to use independently. So you click on pass-through, save it. Now it's configuring the drive to a pass-through. You're going to go to the second one. You're going to do the same thing. Click the pass-through, save. Now it's about right here where it will throw up this warning sign. The disk you've attached was not readable by this computer. Right now we're just going to ignore this because we're going to go back and initialize it once we've done this to all four of these. So just click ignore for right now. Go into the third one, settings, Pass through. And oh, it's going to give me another one. Okay. We're going to go ahead and ignore that one as well for now. Come to the fourth one. Settings. Pass through. Save it. Okay. Now is where we're going to initialize these. So we're going to click on initialize. It's going to bring up the disk utility. Then we will go to the first one and we're going to go ahead and partition that. We're going to click on partition. You're going to hit your plus to add the partition. And you're going to put the name right here. I'm just going to call it Pegasus 1. You can name it whatever you want. You leave it as Mac OS or you could do APFS. Any of those are fine. Click apply. It'll partition that first one. And then you'll see it pop up on your screen here in a second when it's partitioned. Done with that, and you can check it. Eight terabytes. That one's good to go. I'm gonna come back here, the second one. Now, you'll notice that the partition is grayed out here. You can't hit that. So go ahead and click on Erase, which does basically the same thing. I'm gonna name this one, I'm gonna name this one Pegasus 2. And this gives you the APFS format you can do that or you can do Mac OS extended. I'm just going to leave it there. And you click erase and it will format it and you'll see Pegasus 2 pop up. And there it is, it just popped up. You go to the third, do the same thing, click erase. I'm going to name it Pegasus 3. I'll go ahead and leave that one as APFS, click erase. It'll format it. And there you go, Pegasus 3 is up now. 
Now the fourth one. So there you go. You've got four independent hard drives. All of them work. Open up. Each one of them is eight terabytes. And you have effectively unrated your Pegasus. Now, so the other configuration that I mentioned at the beginning, the RAID 5, which is going to work better for me. And what RAID 5 does is it basically takes all four of those drives. It allows you to use basically three of them or 24 terabytes for all of your data. And it uses one of the other ones, the space, to create redundancy. So in layman's terms, what that means is basically if one of these hard drives crashes, you won't lose any of the data. You just replace the drive, pop a new one back in, and you're good to go without any loss of data. So that is my whole reason for wanting to have the four independent hard drives out of this. But like I said, this is going to work better because if you know if one crashes, you know you're good. You're good to go. So the way that you create a RAID 5 is you click on Disk Array. It'll say there's no configured disk arrays because each one of your drives is being used independently as its own drive. So then you've got to create a disk array. You'll click that right up here in the upper right. Now it brings you to the next screen here. You've got to create an alias. I'm going to call this RAID 5. You call it whatever you want. You're going to leave this checked. Enable Media Patrol. Enable PDM. Uh, media Type. Hard Drive. Now down here it gives you a picture of the Pegasus. You, you're going to want to click on each one of these. These are your four drives you want to confirm that you're going to be altering these. And once you've confirmed that you want to use all four of these, and you're going to scroll down and you should see it listed right here. These are the four drives you're using. The IDs of the drive. You want to click Submit. Now it's going to give you a message that the disk array was successfully created. Good. You want to click finish. This screen confirms that you were successful in doing that. The green check mark. This tells you that instead of having four drives that are eight terabytes each, you now have 32 terabytes to work with. Now you want to go up here to the logical drive. Click on that. And it'll say there's no configured logical drives. So you're going to create one. You'll click on the create logical drive. It's going to bring up the configuration that you created. You're going to click Next. This is where you'll create your RAID configuration. Now it gives you the RAID 5 as a default. You'll see there the 24 terabytes will be used. And I just go ahead and stay with what they're presenting here because these are the most optimum settings. Let's see if you go here, you can create a RAID 0 if you want. Uh, any of these others, RAID 5 is what we're looking for. And once you've checked that your settings are all good, you want to come over here and click Add. You'll see that it shows up right here with the check mark by it. Then you want to click Submit. And now it is configuring your RAID 5, which should pop up shortly. And there it is, it pops up. Just to verify, 24 terabytes. It opens up. So there you go. I hope this helps.